You know, Argentina had a lot of prototype jets, right, from the 50s or the late 40s. Museo Nacional Aeronáutica. We are joined by our friend Charlie XB. We always has uh, Malvinas in our heart. Oh, look at this. It's a presidential plane, I think. Hello, welcome back, Buenos Aires. We are out here today, not in the city of Buenos Aires. We are outside the city in Moron. And we're here to see this right behind me. It is Museo Nacional de Aeronautica. That's right. We're here and we're seeing another airplane museum because, well, I really like doing that. And today we are joined by our friend, who you will remember from previous videos, Charlie XB. And Charlie XB was kind enough to drive us out here so I didn't have to take the train. It was awesome. Thank you, Charlie XB. And uh, if you're interested in seeing some really cool airplanes, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. Here it is, Museo, Aeronautic Museo Nacional Aeronautica. All right, we're inside. The whole museum is in this giant hangar here. And they have a ton of planes and even some helicopters in the back. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, un escritor, see? He was a writer, and he wrote, uh, I guess, a book with this character in it. Very cool, very cool. Mamboreta, 1966. I think this is like a, let's see, what is this? This is maybe a trainer? Hmm, let's see if we can get some information here. Yeah, I think this is I think this is a trainer plane. Actually no, I think this is some sort of like agricultural agricultural plane because it says uh con el fin de ser aplicado a tareas agrícolas. I don't know. Anybody? Anybody in the comments? Any airplane nerds out there want to tell me what Mamboreta is? This plane, what they use it for? Why is it so famous? Man, I gotta brush up on my Spanish reading skills. I'm not having a very good day with Spanish reading. Um, I've told you in videos before, I've had good days and bad days with Spanish. And today is not a great one. But that's okay. That's okay. Because we're here at the Museo Nacional Aeronautico. And I'm very excited. Look at all these things. Out in the distance, you can see all the other, like, there's a big, giant, like, Chinook helicopter over there. And, like, some jets. Oh, man, I'm excited. Uh, oh, look at this. Hey, look at, the, look at what we've stumbled upon here. All the super classic old planes. These things are crazy. I've talked about this in, like, preview. Oh, there's a basket for my hot air balloon too. This is, I've talked about this in previous videos where we visited um, like airplane museums like this. Man, these old planes, <laughs> the people that flew these things, them, them were crazy. They were crazy, crazy people because this is basically just like we took a motorcycle engine and we put a propeller on it and we s built up like a plane around it in our backyard and now you're gonna be the one who <laughs> hops in and sees if it can actually fly. Like, that's just crazy, that's crazy. These early, early pilots, 
man, like that we're flying these kinds of things. Those people were nuts. Hats off, salute. A salute to those people, those crazy people who did that. By the time you get to a plane like this, like rotary engine, right? Biplane, the skin of it is made with aluminum instead of like wood and cloth, like these things. By the time you get to this, it's a little more like everybody knows the thing is gonna fly, you know? Still cool, because in this era, with these sort of planes, these were people that were like, you know, they realized that the plane works, they realized that it flies, the design is sound, and then they said, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, you know, fly over the Andes Mountains, or we're gonna fly across the Atlantic Ocean. We have a propeller plane. This is, yeah, this is like from the World War II era plane. Año 1944, from 1944. Monoplane. AEDL-22. Oh, from Argentina. Made in Argentina. That's cool. Now, you know, the one we saw in there, of course, was a German plane, but this one is... Argentine, native. Over here we have Fuerza, Fuerza Aérea Argentina. Oh, this is the motor. El Indio. Radial nine cylinder engine. That's crazy. From 19. 47? Yeah. 1947. I have a tractor out here too. I'm not sure why. It's a nice tractor though. This actually reminds me. The tractor, at least. We saw that um, Museum of Industry, right? Because it says Pampa Industria Argentina, right? We saw that Museum of Industry. It was a big museum that was just full of old classic cars and like tractors and stuff like that, that were all from Argentina. We saw that in Cordoba. Very cool also. I'll link that video in the description because that's really cool too if you're into cars, classic cars and stuff like that. So this plane here, the Juanquero from 1953. Cool. Also Argentina. From here in Argentina, of course. Juanquero, a bimotor multi-propisto. And I guess these would have been like bombers, it looks like, because I can see underneath there's some mounts for where they would have like bombs attached and it has a bombardier window in the front here where the bombardier would be able to like sight um, and you you know like use this to sight the bomb drops we got a jet plane here from 1947, very early, very early jet technology right here, Argentina. Captain piloted in 1947, August 1947 by Captain Edmundo O. Weiss. Wow, okay. have the engine here, the jet engine turbine. Rolls-Royce Derwent 5 turbine engine. Now, I don't understand much about <laughs> I don't understand much about engines, but I understand kind of like piston-driven engines, you know, like the rotary engines and the much older piston-driven engines from the older planes. Turbines I understand very little about. <laughs> I understand very little about. 
I, I kind of understand that, like, you know, it, it sucks in air and it superheats it and spits it out the back. But other than that, man, I kind of don't understand how turbines work. I think they're cool, though, because they make planes go fast. And that, I think, is awesome. Make plane go fast. Make plane go fast is, uh, is good in my book. There's another jet. IA, IAE 33 Pulki 2. Oh, that's the Pulki 2. Second version of it from 1950. Another jet. Look at the size of this intake in the front. I love the early jet designs with um, the, the, the nose intake. Because, you know, you need, a, you need an air intake, right? To suck the air in, to get it into the engine. And uh, <laughs> the easiest way to do it back then, I guess, it's just the engine is right in line with the body. And so they just slap this intake on the front. Not very aerodynamic, but it does the job. It sucks the air in that, that the engine needs. Here we go, right here. This, I think, is an A4 Skyhawk, right? Looks like one. Yep, Douglas, A4B Skyhawk from 1954. This is a US made plane. And these, these were planes that were used pretty heavily during the uh, Malvinas War with the, uh, with the British. Yeah, this one still has still has bombs attached, which I imagine are, are either replicas or uh, are inert, rendered inert. But you can see the weapon ports on the bottom where it would have bombs attached. It's got these big fuel tanks on the side. Fuel drop tanks. Super cool. Here's another A4. This is an A4C Skyhawk newer version this is cool now these old these old skyhawks and also the french mirage jets which there are some over there we're going to see them those are like pretty outdated now but interestingly just recently like a couple months ago in i don't know april i think Argentina signed a deal with Denmark to purchase F-16s from Denmark. And so they're going to become, Argentina is going to become an F-16 country. Denmark is upgrading their um, uh, force to have F-35s, the new F-35 Lightning. And so they're, going to get, they're basically going to sell off their older F-16s. They're still perfectly viable, a very excellent fighter. Uh, fighter attack aircraft also and like a multi-role aircraft they're gonna sell it off they're gonna start delivering those like early next year I think is what I read so Argentina's gonna have F-16s pretty cool here's a uh, helicopter Chinook the Boeing Chinook from 1950 these are like iconic helicopters they have twin rotors two gigantic rotors one up here in the tail and one up on the nose these these things are crazy they're gigantic they can haul like tons of troops or lots of cargo and the twin rotors one of them spins in one direction the other one spins in the other direction so the forces of the spinning like um, counteract each other so that the the helicopter itself doesn't torque like left or right. Helicopters are kind of nuts. Um, I've said this in a previous video. I think the video where we in Santiago in Chile, but like planes when they fly, they basically want to like stay in the air. You get them going fast enough, and they get lift under the wings, and they just want to stay in the air. Basically, helicopters are as you, the pilot, constantly fighting every single force in every direction and trying to balance all of those forces like all together at the same time. So basically this thing wants you to stay in the air 
and that thing is trying to kill you the entire time. Helicopters are pretty terrifying, honestly. Yeah, it's pretty neat that um, it's pretty neat that they're going to be getting F-16s here in in uh, Argentina. That's actually pretty cool. It's gonna it's gonna really modernize their air force, and um, um, additionally, like I think <laughs> originally before before uh, Javier Milei was president, they were considering, and they're actually pretty close, I think, to getting the uh, JF-7 Thunders, which is like a Chinese-Pakistan-made plane, a uh, joint project between China and Pakistan. And uh, if you know anything about Javier Mille, he doesn't like China very much. Um, he's actually said some very strong words about not wanting to, uh, to uh, work with communists, um, basically. And so he, he squashed that deal. They were going to buy the JF-7s, and he squashed that and reached out to Denmark. And so Denmark is going to sell them um, some of their F-16s. Those aren't going to arrive, like I said, until 2025, because some of the older gen, uh, F-16s that Denmark has, they're actually selling to Ukraine. And they've actually just arrived uh, very recently as of the filming of this video. They've arrived in Ukraine. So Ukraine was first on the list to receive the F-16s, of course, because of the war that's going on, the war that they're fighting in. Um, but next up on the list, I think, is going to be Argentina. This is a high AI dagger. So this is the an Israeli made plane, 1971. Now we saw one of these actually at the Air and Space Museum in uh, Quito, Ecuador. The Ecuadorian Air Force flies these daggers as well, um, as well as like I think the Mirage, the Salt Mirage, the French plane, which I think is I think it's this guy right over here. Yeah, the Salt Mirage. And these planes also Mirage were used heavily during the um, the Malvinas War. This one we can actually climb up, take a look in the cockpit. Yo, look at that. The, the crazy thing about these cockpits is they're so tiny. Man, I would not fit in this thing, that's for sure. Now this one actually, this is the Canberra. This is a bomber attack plane and also a recon plane. And this thing, um, I've seen this in like everybody's, basically like a lot of air forces in South America have this. Yeah, the crazy thing about these, the Canberra, is, uh, it's from the United Kingdom. It's a British design plane. <laughs> and uh, during the uh, um, during the Malvinas War, the like Argentine Air Force flew this thing when they were fighting the British. Yeah. Speaking of the... Hey, there's Charlie. Speaking of the Malvinas War, it looks like there's a section in here dedicated to the history of the Malvinas War. Let's go in here. We'll be very quiet. We must be respectful.
here we have a, a lot of references uh, related with the Malvinas War. Uh, in Argentina it's a very sensible uh, topic. Uh, we always has uh, Malvinas in our heart. Uh, in this case we have a recreation of a, a point where the soldiers uh, stay in Malvinas. They have uh, su carpa, uh, dress and equipment. It was very hard uh, for our soldiers because uh, the war was in winter and it was very cold, very, very, mucho frío. <laughs> uh, the, the forces uh, aren't uh, prepared, prepared uh, for this kind of climb. climb. Mm -hmm. We've stumbled upon this hall, Sala Horton. Don't know exactly what this is. There's basically a giant flying wing here. This is like a very early flying wing design. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, very early flying wing design here. Of course, the flying wing design. Like here, yeah, Horton. 1933. This Horton. But this, this flying wing design, of course, evolved into, eventually, like these, the Horton. This is like a, a, a German, during World War II, test plane and eventually into the Northrop Grumman B-2 bomber, stealth bomber from the United States. Very similar design, giant flying wing. It's wild. Pilot flight suit here. This is all from the era of the Malvinas War. Flight crew. Like a flight crew suit. Ejector seat. Which they're telling you you're not allowed to sit on. Some bomb parts. Oh, here's the ejector. Look, we can climb up here and see this actually, look. This is the cockpit. They have just the cockpit section here. bomb parts. Oh yeah, this is the uh, British? This is uh, British, yeah. British Navy ships that came in the Armada to fight the war. These are all HMS ships, including like HMS Invincible, which was a uh, um, like an aircraft carrier, a small aircraft carrier. Six of these British ships were sunk. Were sunk during the war. The Sheffield. Let's see, Coventry also. I think Ardent. Who else? I know there was a... Uh, I don't see it here. Oh, uh... Alacr Alacrity? There. And... Hmm, I think there were two others. I don't see them here. 
I don't see any of the uh, the Argentine ships either, because there were a few Argentine ships that were sunk as well. Most famously, the General Belgrano. And this looks like it's a. Uh, it's a. Oh, this is the Exocet missile. So these are French missiles, anti-ship missiles, and these were were used by the uh, the Argentine Air Force to great effect. And most of the, I think all of the actual sinkings uh, of the British Navy were from these Exocet ship missiles, anti-ship missiles. That, of course, is very um, a very controversial thing because the French had sold those Exocet missiles to um, to Argentina and well the the French and the British have a long sort of love-hate relationship mostly hate um, and so the British were not very very happy about the fact that Argentina was using French missiles French made missiles to uh, sink their ships there's another hall to this place didn't know this thought it was just the one but man there's like whew, there's a whole nother hall over here here's an early very early autogiro an auto gyro right like a cross between a plane and a helicopter that's a terrifying design right there if I've ever seen one I'm talking about things that are trying to kill you all the time some sort of jet design that's interesting because, like, older designs, uh, you know, Argentina had a lot of prototype jets, right, from the 50s, and the early, the late 40s. This is actually from the Soviet Union. This is a MiG, MiG-15. But, you know, Argentina was making prototype jets like this. But later on in the military, they ended up just buying, buying jets and stuff from other countries. It just ends up being more uh, economical and easier to do. Um, it, it's very, very hard and very expensive to uh, have your own, like, jet production, basically. Especially when you're trying to make the engines, too. Just ask India. India has been trying to make not only their own, um, like, natively made fighter jets, but also their own engines for, like, decades now. And they still haven't been able to do it, as far as I know. Most of the time, even if you're making your own, uh, designing your own plane, you're buying the engines from, at least from another country. Even, the Uni even in the United States, when they were designing their own planes, a lot of the times they were buying the engines from the British, the Rolls-Royce engines. So you see that a lot. You see, like, countries where they'll design their own natively designed plane, everything except the engine. They'll buy, you know, buy the engine from Russia or something like that. Because once you've developed this, the technology to be able to design and produce turbine engines, um, you can do it at scale, and then you can sell those turbine engines. And to actually develop... Uh, the entire like supply chain and industry that you need in order to design and produce uh, turbine engines at scale it's a pretty hard thing to do like I said just ask India they've been trying to do it for decades and they haven't been able to do it as far as I know here we have a experimental monoplane ladrillo and a helicopter here this is a very this is like the, uh, yeah, Hiller UH-12E Raven from the United States. This is a pretty iconic helicopter. If you've ever seen the old television show MASH, which was set during the Korean War. These were the helicopters that they used during the Korean War a lot of times for uh, recon and um, like medical extraction also. You can see they have stretchers on the side. These stretchers, you could put like a person on there, a wounded person, fly them out of the combat zone back to like a mobile hospital. A couple of gliders in the back here. Gliders are terrifying. We're just going to drag you up 
into the sky behind, you know, an actual plane with engines and whatnot. And then whenever we feel like it, we're just going to cut you loose. And <laughs> good luck. Hope you make it. I know it's, I know it's safer than, than I make it out, but still it's terrifying. Let's be honest. Gliders, terrifying. Here we have a Douglas C-47 Skytrain. The United States. This is a classic U.S. like cargo and passenger plane from back in the day. And uh, bombing too. I suppose you could you could use it to drop bombs, which it looks like looks like judging by what's strapped to this thing that they were. Yeah, Argentina has a lot of territory in Antarctica. And they were, in fact, I think the first country to put a base in Antarctica because the country is, you know, it's very close. So here's some Antarctic, like, snowcat type vehicles. An Antarctic plane, this prop plane. I guess this would be... They could switch out the wheels for these skis so it could land on the snow. That is super cool. A Grumman SA-16 Albatross in the United States also. Giant seaplane. Can land out on the water. That's super cool. And here the Bell UH-1 Huey Iroquois. The actual name Iroquois, but they call it the Huey because it's a UH-1, and when you say UH-1, it sounds like Huey. Anyway, this is like the iconic, iconic helicopter from the uh, Vietnam War in the United States. Monoplane from France, Morin Saulnier Cricket. Argentine Air Force plane here from the Estados Unidos, but United States, but it's a Aero Commander Transport Executive Transport plane. And uh, oh, look at this! You know what this is? We've seen already Juan Perón's train. And now, it's a presidential plane, I think. This is the presidential aircraft, like uh, Air Force One in the United States. The presidential aircraft. Fokker, Dutch made, Fokker, F-28. Mark 1000, 4000 Fellowship. Let's see here, what do we got? Uh, oh, this is Pope John Paul II coming down from one of these planes. So I guess this is the presidential plane, but also they would use these for VIP transport, like the Pope. And of course, the current Pope, Pope Francisco, is from Argentina. So maybe Pope Francisco is flying around in one of these things too. This looks like another passenger passenger plane the Fokker F27 Mark 600 troop ship oh, okay yeah passenger and troop transport and then this uh, oh well this then this thing they don't actually have where is it's like a big one of those flying wing projects that we saw I think it's in pieces back there honestly um, ah, Sikorsky. Here's the Sikorsky from the United States. Sikorsky, very famous helicopter company in the United States. Fuerza Area Argentina. These are like naval helicopters, right? Search and rescue, and like they'll use them to hunt submarines and stuff like that. And then right here. North American F-86 Sabre. We definitely saw one of these. 
one of these and one of the MiG-15s um, at the uh, Air Force Museum in Santiago. They were parked right out in front. This is like F-86 Sabre, one of the very first jet fighter designs um, that went into mass production, right? Like there were some jet fighter designs that the Germans had during World War II, the very end of World War II. They never really made it into mass production, but these were, and these too. And these, the MiG-15, right? Were uh, were being flown by the uh, North Koreans during the Korean War, so it was like, well, they were also being flown by Soviet pilots in the North Korean Air Force during the North Korean War or the Korean War. So this I was fighting with this above the skies of Korea in the 1950s. That's pretty wild. Well, I think we've seen, we've seen everything. We've seen both halls. We saw the uh, section about the Malvinas, which was uh, very sobering, very sobering to see. You know, I've learned about the Malvinas War, and but it's very, very sobering to see, like, in there, you know, pieces of, like, um, destroyed aircraft and, like, the, the paintings of all of the pilots that died and then also like the paintings depicting like what was happening in the battle like when they died it's very sobering it was very um i'm very glad that i saw it though because it's very important to the history of argentina and other than that all of these airplanes are super super cool i'm super glad we came here um super glad we were able to come here with our buddy charlie because he apparently, Charlie XP, had been wanting to come to see this place as well. Um, and just like never had the time or the opportunity to do it. But we convinced him to come. And I'm pretty happy about that because I think he enjoyed himself uh, as well. Actually, he's right over here. Let's find out. Amigo, disfrutaste on museo? Yes. See? Uh, I like this section uh, related with Antarctica. Antarctica is a very difficult uh, continent, has many difficulties uh, with the climb, uh, so you need a specific um, uh, vehicles mm -hmm. uh, for this uh, surface, difficult surface from Antarctica. And all of these uh, vehicles are in orange color, is the, the color uh, selected to places uh, with the uh, ice like Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I also, I also think that the stuff from Antarctica is super cool. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I enjoyed my visit here to the museum. Charlie, you heard, enjoyed his visit here to the museum. And hopefully you all enjoyed your visit here to the museum as well. So I think that's going to be it. There's going to be plenty more coming from here in Buenos Aires, so stick around for that and we'll see you in the next one.